Ooh. Hey, Sina. Hi. All right. Whenever you're ready. Okay. So thank you. I think I'm in soft mode. Should have checked that. Um, so thank you very much for the opportunity to present everybody. And um, what I'm going to be talking about today, similar to Tracy's talk and our colleagues yesterday at Flinders, uh, with a case study around how we appropriated LT to be able to deliver our, um, our units of study via emergency remote um, teaching practices. It's different to online. We design our units of study for face-to-face -face delivery, and so that adaptation is actually emergency remote, not designed for online. Uh, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of Australia and recognise their continuing connection to the land, water and culture. And today I'm on the land of the Gurungai Nation and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Okay, so the context, we have large second year uh, units of study in the uh, medical sciences program and the one I coordinate is MEDS 2002 which is key concepts in pharmacology. So this is introductory fundamental pharmacology unit of study and forms core to the medical science program as well as our pharmacology major. We have over 300 students, last year we had up to 400 so we've got a lot of students to work with, not as big as first year cohorts I appreciate, uh, still quite significant. So we employ large group collaborative active learning and we really embed into our curriculum those valued practices of scientific thinking, experimental method, experimental design and laboratory skills. So we have four modules in this unit and each of those modules is associated with a couple of lectures a week, a practical and a data workshop and as well as team based learning workshops. And you will remember semester one started off really nicely. No week we had students attending lectures, going to the pub. And then in week four for us at Sydney University, this happened and we were not ready. Uh, campus was closed. We weren't even allowed on campus without special permission. Uh, students definitely weren't allowed. Uh, so obviously we had to very quickly adapt. And so we went from having designed for our lessons like this, where we have our students in our laboratories to this. And that was, that's our challenge. And this is a challenge that everybody faced to convert our learning activities designed for face-to-face -face delivery into an online format. And in my case, and I echo the experiences of others who've spoken over the last few days, overnight. Um, as a first semester unit coordinator, I pretty much had to do it overnight while maintaining group integrity because these um, in this unit of study, there's a lot of group um, specified group work, ensuring the learning outcomes are still met for 300 students. I screamed. Um, all I could say was thank God for LT. That is our saving grace because it actually meant we could go overnight. Now, I had some colleagues who'd never used LT, but thankfully with the um, free subscriptions that were available, they could then quickly convert everything um, and required quite a bit of support with that, which was great. But thankfully, we were already using LT. We've been using Lab Tutor and, and LT since 2013. Still adapting our lessons designed for face to face to emote, remote, emergency remote learning while retaining the valued practices and the learning outcomes was a massive challenge and I panicked, I really did. It literally had one day where we were told, that's it, students are online and I was running a prac the next week, but I was in the middle of running a tute that week. So what did we do? After I panicked, I upskilled very rapidly to Zoom in Zoom, very, very rapidly. Um, then what did we do? We adapted all our LT lessons for remote delivery while trying to retain those valued practices. And um, I'll, I'm going to give you an example with our pharmacogenomics prac shortly, um, which was the prac that I had to run literally that week. Um, created and embedded videos for practical demonstrations, and I've seen others have um, provided examples of this as well. Added extra instructions, images and questions to our LT lessons to help scaffold the students' understanding and also increase their interactivity with the material. If they couldn't be in the classroom asking the questions and us answering them, then we embedded them into the actual um, lesson and we used last year's class data for analysis. So all of our lessons continue to run in real time, so synchronous, but it was synchronous remote delivery. And the other thing that I learned very quickly, having never had to um, teach online, was I needed to redesign the in-time delivery of all of my lessons and I know that's a common experience. Um, uh, and so being able to adapt LT, using LT as a scaffold, facilitated by Zoom, 
So there was quite a body of work going on. Um, and the example I'm going to give you now quickly is the pharmacogenomics practical. It's synchronous in time, large group learning. So we've got 300 students, four repeats over four days. So at least 80 students in each class um, using LT. Uh, the head demonstrator, so I had to get extra staff on. I would stay in the main Zoom room and I'd do the um, the scaffolding and stepping through students through and then we'd send them into breakout rooms to work on questions and um, then we'd send demonstrators through those breakout rooms as well to help facilitate discussion. But they'd move in and out of different al allocated rooms. Um, sorry, um, oopsie, I'm going to go back there. I'm going to quickly share my lesson with you. I want to show you very quickly what this looks like. You can see that, Liam? That's just the... Yep, great. Yep. Okay, so uh, what did we do? So we embedded in more explicitly aspects of experimental design, and this is where, this is, I'm just taking you through to a few example pages within the lesson. So where we would need to speak through what we would usually just do ad lib in the classroom we would then write we wrote into the notes and spoke through these aspects and embedded in some exercises for students to actually appreciate what it um what they were doing what they would be doing in the class um extra images like the setup that would usually be in front of you and what this um what all the reagents were and so on and we would speak through these aspects um rather than just letting students just look through it on their own. And we found that then they gave the opportunity for students to ask questions while we we're working through this material. And then, uh, oopsie, no, and this is an example of where, where we've put in um, the principles of what they're learning and then um, facilitated that with a range of questions for them to go into their breakout rooms and work through in their small groups and then come back and have a chat about that in the main room before we then step them into the next section embedding videos for example i won't go through them but they're very very useful this one in particular the our technical support team services team uh, were actually extremely instrumental in providing these videos very quickly for us which we couldn't be more appreciative of and so on so i just wanted to show you there what um how some ways in which we appropriated our lt lessons in order to facilitate student learning remotely in real time so very quickly challenges encountered it, I found it very difficult to know via Zoom whether students were understanding, and I know this has been a to strong topic in um, in this um, in this in this conference so far. So we did things like design additional self test questions in LT, actually prompt questioning by the demonstrators to test student understanding. The analytics showed that students didn't engage very effectively with our videos. And so we thought, well, what do we do? Do we play them in full with everybody in the main room so we can make sure that they're watching it? But then you don't know if they've gone off to get themselves a snack or something. And um, another tactic we used, so as we were constantly learning, because we had quite a few pracs, was to actually not write all the methods down, but engage the students in the videos by asking them to write down the methods while they were watching so that they understood and then ask questions about it. And something else we've done this semester as well is use real time demonstration of methods using Zoom on mobile devices. So we're in the lab, but students are still at home and we're actually using Zoom on our phones and walking around and doing real time demonstrations, gathering data that students then need to use. Um, technical difficulties are always a problem. Students were new to this too. This was obviously a big, big culture change and setting the expectations for how they interact in their different rooms was really important. And also four hour pracs, because we have four hour pracs can become rather tedious when fully online. And so we've thought about a range of um, methods to break the lessons up, have some synchronous and asynchronous asynchronous activity, self-test, real-time feedback, and so on. But we've generally stuck to the four hours um, and used the time to really work with the students. How else would, did LT help us? We could monitor lesson progress, which is fantastic. I could see whether they'd started, um, so not started, uh, whether they were in progress, and then I could see where they were going with that progress, and then I could um, also see when they'd completed. We used the analytics, and we also embedded a lesson evaluation into the end of each of our practice, which was quite helpful. So um, just as Tracy was saying, what does 2021 look like? We know remote learning will continue, and so we're constantly learning about how we can improve our high flex delivery in LT, to accommodate differently abled students as well as remote learners. So it's been a huge, huge learning curve for us. Thank you. Awesome. 
Cheers, Tina. Uh, I've got three rapid fire questions just came in the last minute. So if you're willing to answer those, uh, the first one's from Ricky, uh, just asking, uh, could they please have a copy of your challenges encountered and uh, solutions? Most definitely, yes. I'd be very pleased to share those. Cool, and I can help facilitate that. Uh, next, we've got Sanjay with, uh, did you supplement your videos with related questions? I'm just going to stop the timer. Sorry, yes. uh, I'll start that again. Did you supplement your videos with related questions? Correct, so we, we five, did. Four, sorry, there's more to it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, say, four, say four or five post video questions that could only be answered if the video had been viewed. Correct. So at first, no. And then as we learned that students were not engaging with the videos because the analytics showed us how much time they're actually spending on them, then that's exactly what we did in subsequent lessons. We developed that into it, including questions, not telling them what the methods are, but asking them to tell us what the methods were and what they would do and the flow diagrams and sequencing and so on. Yes. Sweet. And a final one from Patricia was, how were you using LT before the COVID transition? Sure, a fully uh, hybrid. Um, so in the classroom, students would have in the laboratory, for example, they would have LT as their lesson platform. That is where they would record all their data, follow all of the instructions, um, annotate, you know, any gels or results that came out or dose response curves, images and so on, um, where the where we use the um, yeah, the power labs to collect data, we'd be obviously using LT embedded, they'd be collecting data embedded in LT. Also in tutorials, it's it's basically the platform for delivery of all of our lessons in our TBLs, in our data workshops, and um, and so, but it was always facilitated face-to-face. -face. So we'd be using LT, students would always have it up on their computer, they'd probably have something else up like Canvas or GraphPad Prism or something else they were working with, and, um, and that's where we'd expect them to conduct all of their learning as a platform for all their learning. Sweet, cheers. Um, sorry, Liz, I saw you just had a question, but we need to move on to the last presenter of the day. I just want to say thank you again, uh, Tina, thank and you. cheers.